We're here overlooking Washington, D.C., which in 1814 was still a very young city. It had only been the capital for 14 years. The British decided to attack it in the War of 1812 after Napoleon was defeated in Europe in 1814. The British redeployed troops and ships that had been used in fighting Napoleon to raid the American coast. They wanted to retaliate for damage done to Canadian cities by Americans in the Great Lakes region. Uh, they were hoping that they could draw troops away from the British colony of Canada. And they wanted to create sectional tension and hurt the morale and the will to fight of the American people. They picked Baltimore and D.C. to begin with, and D.C. in particular, because they recognized that it was poorly defended and that it would be such an embarrassment to the U.S. government. They landed troops in Maryland in August of 1814, therefore, and quickly defeated uh, American militiamen and sailors at the Battle of Bladensburg and marched into the city. The government was forced to flee. President Madison fled into Virginia, and First Lady Dolly Madison famously oversaw the removal of a lot of artifacts from the White House to save them from being destroyed by the British, most famously a portrait of George Washington. The U.S. Navy, to keep their supplies from falling into British hands, set the Navy Yard on fire, including two basically brand new warships that were not quite ready to sail. And when the British entered the city, they continued the destruction. Admiral George Coburn oversaw the burning of Washington, and he was so proud of it that he actually had it painted as the background of his portrait later. Um, but he did spare most of the civilian buildings and had his troops burn the government buildings. So they burned the White House, the Capitol, um, and buildings like the Treasury, um, but not private residences. They did interestingly spare the patent office when the head of the patent office convinced the British leaders that the items inside it were private property um, and that all of the inventions and ideas there would be a loss to humanity and human progress if they were destroyed. But still, the fires were visible for 40 miles around. It wasn't until the next day when a huge storm came through that the fires were put out, but the storm was so windy that it spawned a tornado, and many private buildings that had been spared by the British were damaged themselves. This whole time there was also rampant looting, and so even private citizens didn't get off scot-free from the burning. This is arguably America's darkest hour. It was a huge embarrassment to the government and to President Madison. The Secretary of War had to resign. Uh, but the British left almost immediately because they'd never planned to hold the city to begin with, and it became clear as they moved towards Baltimore that it was not as much of a success as they'd hoped for. Uh, for one thing, the delay in, in attacking Washington, and especially the delay caused by the raid on nearby Alexandria, delayed the British in reaching Baltimore and gave the people of Baltimore time to better defend themselves. This is part of why the British were defeated at the Battle of Fort McHenry, which became the inspiration for the Star-Spangled Banner, our national anthem. Uh, the government also was pretty quickly able to move back into the city. Congress actually met in the patent office since it was one of the only government buildings left. The president was able to move back into the White House in 1817, and the Library of Congress, which had been burned when the Capitol burned down, uh, was replenished when Congress spent money to buy Thomas Jefferson's private library since he was deeply in debt, which became the foundation of the modern Library of Congress. Ultimately then, the burning of Washington was not a, as much of a failure as it might seem at first. It was a huge embarrassment to begin with, but American victories at Baltimore and uh, Plattsburgh, New York, helped salvage morale, um, and it didn't really do anything to draw troops away from Canada like the British had hoped. Most importantly, the burning of Washington demonstrated that the young republic, which the whole world had seen as a fragile institution, could survive war with a major power and even military disaster without losing the democratic principles that it stood for.